Hey, what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Honeycode and how I was wrong with it, because this has been out about two weeks now, and I feel like that's good enough time to give you a reasonable opinion about Honeycode, as opposed to a first look. You might be saying, ah, I don't know what Honeycode is, I don't really care, and that might be a valid opinion, and you're right to a valid opinion, except more and more companies uh, are going to be using Honeycode. For example, you might have heard of Slack. It's a, a relatively large company, per se and Slack started to use Honeycode. So, and of course there's more companies that have started to use Honeycode too and it just started or just came out like two weeks ago. So it will be, I guess, more and more relevant in the near coming months and years. So therefore, it is useful to learn the basics of it and the uses of it and why you would want to use it because it's very simplified and it's, it's easier than coding, but it's kind of more more difficult than just using like a normal spreadsheet because you have like the spreadsheet aspect and you also have the app creation aspect, the UI piece as well. And it, it abstracts away like the code using formulas, which is useful but has drawbacks as well. So in my last video about Honeycode, I made a very simple kind of like landing page, kind of like app where a user could put in an email and their name and that would of course be stored in the data in the table but I made some assumptions making that app. And the assumptions I made were that anyone would be able to access it, and that's not true. You have to have be added to the team because the first, only the first 20 people would be able to use it for free. The first 20 users would be able to use it for free. And that was the assumption I made. I thought it was like free for everyone since it was like in a beta period, and that was wrong. So what would be the uses of Honeycode in that case though then? So, Amazon claims that Honeycode would be used for like, instead of like having to toss around an Excel sheet, like back and forth to it, like in Teams, they, they would say that like, you can use this cloud solution instead of just using email. But that, I don't know when Amazon was creating this, maybe like 10 years ago, but I don't know many teams or companies that send around a spreadsheet back and forth to do basic tasks. I feel like that's kind of like 20 years ago and before many people were born. <laughs> so of course it's ideal for people that don't want to use and set up infrastructure because that would of course be cheaper, right? And you would, in large companies, you would want to do the cheaper thing and therefore large companies wouldn't want to be using Honeycode. So that's, that's probably why many companies will not be switching to Honeycode as opposed to like simple spreadsheet things. So it is not going to be ideal for these medium to large size companies that want to set up and that have the manpower or woman power to set up inf infrastructure because the infrastructure is of course going to be cheaper and easier to change. Well, maybe not easier to change, but easier to, s to do more things with, if you s know what I'm saying. Like if you want to completely change around the website, or something like that, change around the back end, it'll be much easier to do. So let me give you an alternative to Honeycode if you are stuck on using Honeycode. And Honeycode has very many com competitors like that do the pretty much the exact same thing. So for example, there's Betty Blocks and then there's Power Apps for Microsoft. So you would of course think that Microsoft has a competitor or a, a competing tool for what Amazon has. They're very, very like, head on with um, what they're like producing with AWS and Azure. So if you don't want to use these like code as a platform kind of tools that like make it without code, then you could easily just set this up using AWS. And I've made a lot of videos on AWS in the past, but AWS is really easy to set up because they wanted to make it consumer friendly. So it's not like ridiculously hard. You don't have to write a million different lines of code just to get a server up and running or statically host a website. And oftentimes, like the backend calls can be free for a certain number of calls. For example, it'll be very cost efficient to use like Lambda, DynamoDB, like as the backend uh, data store, and then like S3 to store the statically hosted website. And a lot of them, like uh, for example, DynamoDB and Lambda have a certain amount of always free usage. So, for example, Lambda will have 1 million free re requests per month, while Unicode will only have 20 free users being able to use the app. So, now let me just do the math here, carry the 1, 1 million minus 20, that's, that's a lot of potential wasted 
by just using Honeycode instead of like using a Lambda. So I'm not saying you have to use Lambda, but if you were if you're really stuck on Honeycode, I would recommend going some other options. And that doesn't necessarily use PHP, because PHP is old. <laughs> and for example, you can also get 25 gigabytes free of DynamoDB. I'm, I feel like I'm advertising DynamoDB and Lambda here, but they're just so useful and they're so much better than some of their alternatives that I just I don't have someone else to some other tool to advertise. <laughs> And while S3 does not have like an always free per month cost, because that's kind of like where you store stuff, you can store stuff very cheap. It'll probably be like dollars on the like the month if you have only 20 people. Probably way less than that, honestly. I'm gonna link in the description the free tier services from AWS because technically Honeycode is not part of AWS. They just wanted to make it Amazon. Like I had to sign up just for Honeycode instead of using my AWS account, which kind of makes sense. It's not really it's, it's not really a web service. It is a web service, and it's part of Amazon, but it's not part of Amazon Web Services, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it's really confusing. What, I don't know why they did that. So one potential issue that Honeycode has with it right now is that you cannot bring in outside data. And I have a feeling that if they really want to make this like a really popular tool, they wouldn't really need to fix that issue, because a lot of companies already have like the data stored somewhere else like in some kind of other spreadsheet. So they would need to port it in manually and you'd have to like type out all that, all that data, which can lead to errors. So they need a way to port it in manually instead of having to create a whole new app and then starting from the beginning, which wastes a lot of resources. So what I would potentially think of a solution for that is maybe set up some kind of transfer mechanism that you can transfer from like Excel, Microsoft 365, some Google Docs potentially, but then you would have to like have Google and Microsoft working with Amazon, which you know how much they hate each other. So that will probably not happen, honestly. So like, and those are the competitors, Google Docs and Microsoft 365. So I believe those are the main competitors for Honeycode. So why would they want to, why would they work with a competitor just so the competitor can get it up and running? So I don't, that's how I don't see Honeycode really reaching all that high of potential, unless so many people just start really liking the user interface and that the data and the app kind of work together pretty smoothly. That's the only reason I can see how Honeycode really starts to take off. So one of the key motivators of getting Honeycode was reducing the cost of the constant emailing back and forth, which doesn't happen, like I said earlier. So likely to compete against Google and Microsoft. So one thing I always like to bring up when something likes to make a change is I want to question, what are, what are they bringing to the table? What is Amazon bringing to the table? And are they changing a winning game plan, which is Google Docs and Microsoft 365? And they kind of are changing a winning game plan. Like Those tools were already winning. So why would you change the system if it's already working? So I, I have a feeling many people will understand the Excel spreadsheet kind of like style, but I don't I don't feel like they're gonna like the app making aspect of it. So they already work well, so I don't see the, I don't see it much adding to the game in terms of spreadsheet usability. See so the only thing I see they add right now is that the fact the that they add something called like automation, which will kind of like automatically change the spreadsheets. Like you can remove columns, remove rows just from the app alone, which is which is kind of useful, but I don't see if that's reason enough to switch to it. So another complaint people have is that the UX and the design for Honeycode is not really kind of like, it's not like the top of the best UX and design. It kind of seems very blocky and not UX centered. It's more data centered, I believe. Anyways, that's my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.